Uh, certainly anyone's game at this point. It certainly is, and we'll keep you updated right throughout the day with around the ground scores across the Eastern Football League. But for now, we're into the second half from Schrands Reserve, and it's McKenzie who won the knockdown, taken by Anarchus. That was good roving as he carries it to centre wing, kicks towards the half forward flank. Caught behind there is Kadir. He's eventually bumped off the football. Paduto went in half with his head over the football. Eventually, Sockers it out. Mulgrave have the numbers at the back of the pack. Good hand pass from Young just to compose the Lions <laughs> down. The kick across goal, almost a Cardinal in as Jamar dropped the mark but they have the numbers as Jamar regains it and eventually they link up well deep inside their defensive zone dribble kick in the direction of Jamar Fiora turns it over does it well breaks through a couple of tackles eventually gives it back to his teammate in Pearson who's claimed and dragged across the boundary line and will have a throw in 45 meters around from the Doncaster goal they're kicking to the northern end in this third term if you're enjoying the broadcast, Radio Eastern 98.1 FM or streaming live on EFL.org.au as Kinnear won the knockdown and a free kick's been picked out of the stoppage. It's going the way of Doncaster for a high tackle. Marcus. We're certainly there. It certainly was there and the recipient looks as if it That's is Anarchus. Chris Anarchus. So Anarchus can wheel around onto that trusty right foot. He certainly wanted to move the play on but the ball will go into a congested forward line if he goes in very quickly so he has to assess the options and orchestrate an attack sends a long ball to the top of the square it's intimidating eventually oh. Shilbush at the back couldn't quite claim it they had the numbers though brilliant evasion by Peduto sends it back to his teammate in Colinari spearing ball was sensational and he's found the target on the lead with the outstretched arms it was fantastic ball movement and will have a shot on goal Steve Muller he can shoot for his third major of the afternoon and you see the the way Doncaster really were very patient uh, going to inside their forward 50, and obviously as a result, it's a march to uh, Steve Muller with a chance to put, push his margin out to 13. So Muller, who certainly has been one of the key focal points in Doncaster's forward line in this match from 45 metres, almost directly in front, worked brilliantly off the boot, and Doncaster had their fifth major for the afternoon. They've opened up a buffer once again. They're 5 4 34, leading Mulgrave 3 3 21. We've gone two minutes in the third term on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Steve Mullins kicked two goals in a minute. He kicked the last one right on the halftime yep. siren, and he just put one through there. Anyone around the ground is the winner of the $150 meat tray here at Tramp Reserve, a red ticket, E26. <laughs> and you can see You'd straight away... would you? <laughs> and you see straight away, Doncaster's gone out, uh, gone out of this quarter and really gone aggressive and uh, really yep. t uh, locked down Mulgrave's defensive line, and they've done it so far to perfection. Two and a half minutes gone. 13 points is the margin. Mackenzie uh, slipped over at the crucial stage in the middle. No one won the clear knockout, so the umpire will come back in and bounce it. It's more. So some interesting results as we heard Dyson go through them at half time. That's for sure. The umpire calls for the ball to come back. I think this could be a free kick to Mulgrave to Dean C. Coolis in the in the guts. It is. He's got Fowler short if he wants to use him. Also got Lester instead. He'll go towards the Booth or Gladman direction. Gladman found some space, so the big man takes it across the half-forward line. Winds around now on the right boot, kicks it up towards the Booth direction. Well done there by McGarnis, who eventually worked himself to the front spot, knocked through by Pearson for a rush behind. So Bendigo Bank scoreboard sees Mulgrave 3-4-22. They're trailing by two straight kicks. Doncaster 5-4-34 is... Short passes on. Anarchus will receive 25 yeah. for a, a non-necessary nudge from Tim Knowles, who decides out. to uh, give a little bit of back chat and is certainly not well received by the umpire here. And he's reaching for the pocket, so expect a yellow card to come out here for Tim Knowles. And, uh, well, the Doncaster faithful, you can hear <laughs> the murmurs be, in the background. Would that be for the act or more for whatever was said down in the umpire? 100% it was the... 100% uh, uh, it, was, it was for what was said. Yeah. So... Didn't appreciate the 25 metre penalty. No, good umpiring, very authoritative umpiring. We'd like to see that. No, that's right. Look at Anarchus just giving just him a bit of back chat. Uh, <laughs> well, Anarchus is just telling him that uh, this ain't 25 metres, mate. So uh, we need to go back a few strides, I think, which they're doing so now. <laughs> so, Chris Anarchus. So the play just slows down a little bit here at Shrams Reserve. Johnson back to Anarkas, went one way, the stop uh. propped, put himself under a bit of pressure there. It was a good, a good smother by Stokey. 
Narcus eventually giving away the free kick to Fowler in the middle of the ground for an in the back. Now Fowler Good wants to switch the play out wide towards the Jamo direction. He's got Lester there for support, Galache. Oh, oh fresh air shot. Nearly kicked Lester in the head. And the umpire said play on as Lester switches it in towards the middle. Stokey takes the mark. Plays it further out wide if they want to use them. But you might elect to go down the middle. Oh, I thought he was going to... He went for the switch in the end. And it was a sloppy kick off the boot with Adrian Galache taking the gift. In the middle of the ground now, Collinary takes it. So, just waiting for some options up forward. So they'll go to the to the to the main targets where Lumen Cheesy comes out. It was nicely fisted away from Cruz that time at the fall of the Gee. ball. Oh, Lester oh. copped one extremely high Gee. from Kinnear. That was a bear hug. <laughs> if ever I've seen one, and he's certainly a big bear. He's been Kinnear and Lester. Gives a little handball out wide, and now the Lions can rebound from halfback. Indeed they do on the halfback flank. They've got a couple of linking options through hand pass. Butler, eventually they give it back with a 1-2 to Leicester. He's hard up against the boundary line in a confined space. Opts to go back into the defensive 50 and finds Goldsmith. The switch across the face of the defensive goal is risky because Muller's chasing after it. He retrieves it from the ground. Tackled by his opponent. It's almost a bit of a uh, wrestle as they move into the pocket. That was brilliantly done by Willsmore. And we'll have a bounce deep inside Doncaster. In fact, Mulgraves forward 50. In fact, it is in the Doncaster forward 50 as Kinnear races to the ruck contest. Yeah, we've been doing the ruck work up, ruck work mm. up forward. He's actually a pretty handy tap ruckman. He tends to get first hands on the footy in the ruck, ruck contest a lot. And we'll have yet another throw in. 30 metres around from the Sharks' goal. Just quickly run through some Division yes. 4 half-time scores. Very important. Nothing through from Fair Park Reserve. So if you're out there, send something through, please. Yep. Fern Tree Gully, 11-11-77 on top of Nana Wadding. He'll kick one goal, two, eight. Yep. Forest Hill, 6-5-41. Le lead Park Quarters by 26, wow. one nine fifteen. Sylvan, 11-6-72. All over Kilsyth at Pinch Reserve, 2-4-16. And Warrandyte, 12-4-76. All over Surrey Park. Oh, Lanarkis might just kick a goal here for Doncaster. He's all class. He's made it very hard, but oh. he sloppily kicks it and has <laughs> taken a mark on the goal line. As see call us now. We'll get the reprieve for the Lions. He might receive it back here and backwards to go forwards. Here's Young. We'll swing around on the left boot. Drives the ball up towards the wing position over the top of Roper's head. Here's Ramboldi. He's got a little bit of yeah. strapping back towards Maganis, who's been mm. relatively quiet in the possession stakes, but he certainly... Uh, he holds his own as we have a look at some more around the grand scores. Yep, Division 3, Glen Waverley Hawks, 5-3-33. They lead Heathmont by 6 points, 4-3-27 at half time. Upper Fern Tree Gully, they trail Ringwood by 22, 8-4-52 to 4-6-30. Templestowe at the Wharf, 9-4-58. They lead Churnside Park by 45, 1-7-13. Low scoring affair at Baronia, the Hawks 4 4 28. They lead South Belgrave 2 5 17. Uh, Mitchum up by 34 at quarter time, no half time score from there. And at one turn to South at 3 7 25. They lead Whitehorse by 12 points at 1 7 13 at half time. Division 2. Straight across to Division 2. Bayswater, they still lead Doncaster East 9 7 61 to 3 5 23. The Waverley Blues fought back against East Burwood. They now lead 9 2 56 to 6 3 39. North Ringwood at home 4 6 30. They led Moorabark 1 2 8. And of course, the radio game, Doncaster were up by seven and a half time. Well, the ball's about 20 metres out from the Doncaster goal line. The big cheese tried to oh. barge his way through two tackles. Stokey will be the recipient of a holding the ball decision paid in the middle of the ground. Here's Gladman who takes it now for the Lions. He shouldn't have done a U turn. Instead, he drives the ball up towards the half forward line where David Wazer leads out on right on his hammer and knocked beautifully over the boundary line and out of bounds. Well, the cheese was getting tackled then. He was like the cheese in the sandwich. <laughs> That was a really bad joke. <laughs> but uh, you can see that Mulgrave was trying to use that play to get into their four line, but uh, obviously um, was that play just uh, turned around and instead of could have just uh, kept leading. Ben Waterworth loving Will Taylor's work today. Yes. The ball's being thrown back in across the half forward line. See it coolest. Wraps up. Carroll in a tackle and we'll have a bounce. Seymour. Division 1 time. Ball went having an all their own way against Knox. 14-5-89 to 1-2-8. Blackburn 8-10-58 leads South Croydon 5-2-32. The Bulls 7-9-51. Lately Lilladale 2-5-17 at the LSO. Montrose are up by 27 at quarter time over East Ringwood. No half time score there. Norwood 7-8-50. They lead her over by 3 goals. 5-2-32. And out at the nest. Vermont 10-7-67. They lead scores be 7-2-44. They're so still in it. Only a 23-point margin to the Eagles at halftime. 
So the kick goes up towards the wing position now. Galache, who went after it. He really oh, wanted the football here. He's silky, silky smooth skills there of Galache. Handball over the top. He might get the football back here. He's put his teammate in uh, James C. Cavellas under a fair old bit of pressure. Right in front of the Mulgrave interchange bench here. Looks like Anarkis is finally letting letting loose through the midfield in, in the first in this third quarter. The first half he was of course stuck at full forward in the forward pocket. Um, a dangerous play if he gets off the chain. Two goal margin to the home side as the big man McKenzie got it away to Carroll. Now it's Malloy in the middle of the ground. Chips it over the top. It was a good looking kick too because Parker had a little bit of space. Oh. Wants to go further out wide where Benny McGarner's called for. It. Short passes on. It was a neat one too. Coming in and taking Fiora. it Aaron Fiora. Swings around on the left boot now. Kick up towards the half forward line in towards the glue pot in the middle of the ground. And Narcus lays a pretty good tackle there on Cheeseman. The ball spills out. Umpire said play on. Seeker Ballas is in there. Couldn't release the pill. And we'll have a on the free ball. kick in the middle of the ground. Grant Campbell, thanks to choose tap. Inside 50s, 4 1 in favour of Doncaster this quarter. Stokey on the right boot, kicks it out towards Gladman at the back of the pack. Jamo has a little bit of space and he's got the dash too, one way then the other. He'll square it up towards centre half forward. It was a neat old looking kick too, but there was holding oh, on. on after the ball was released. So it could be a downfield free kick here. Free kick it seven. Is. Free kick Mulgrave. seven, one in favour of Mulgrave. Okay. Free kick to Fowler. We've got no one inside 450. 55, 55 metres out. Well, boots out of the goal square. Um, but Fowler, you have to go all the way here. I think, yeah. he can, I think he can kick this far, Fowler. Oh. No. Instead, he goes for a bit of a helicopter punt kick out towards Poor the kick. booth direction. It was not a ter terrible, great option in the end as Magana sees it over the boundary line and out of bounds. Didn't actually gain distance with that kick. It was no. a very poor option to go across the ground. Yeah, but you could see, though, that Doncaster... Mulgrove had nowhere to go because it was all clogged up by Doncaster clogging up that forward 50, which they've done so f well so far in this game, and jo which Mulgrove had to resolve. Josh Lumachigi and, and Tommy Glabin have uh, just been yellow-carded after a little bit of fracco on the opposite side of the ground. Yes, uh... Yeah, it looks as if they've stopped the play here as the players move on and off the interchange bench amidst the scuffle. Who did you say that was, Gladman? And, and Josh Lumachisi. Okay, I thought I saw Colinari go off there as well. No, the cheese was the first one. A yeah. couple of Mulgrave players a little worse for wear as well. Fredericks coming off the ground after that scuffle. Yeah, he wore one from Pearson. Well, the umpire throws it back in. Anarka's got the handball away to Schimmelbush, who got a little look away handball back to Anarka's little worm burning kick goes out wide. It worked yeah. out well for Fitzpatrick, who just couldn't quite hold the football. Good pressure there from Butler to release. See you, Cavallis. Uh, sorry, uh, see you, Coolis across the half forward <laughs> line. Bouncing football west one way, then the other. Silky skills. Oh. Oh. Swing around now. He's got no one to go to, though. He kicks it across the oh. face up towards the oh. half forward. Well, the, the option was Fowler, but Fiora took the strong mark. He put himself under a lot of pressure. Handball away, Hill. Now in the middle of the ground, gets it away to Johnson, slams it on his left boot, kicks it out wide towards the run of Anarkas. It's bounced in front there of Stokey. Good play there by Hill to get the handball away back to Johnson. He's had a super game so far inside forward 50 towards the Galache direction. Jamo led the race in that one. Handball back to Willsmore. That was okay. And through the arms of Gilling, he switches the play out wide there. And now the mark has been taken by Young, who swings on that trusty left foot kick up towards the half back line. They've still got the numbers there. Curl picks it up and links okay. Here go the line. Lions now, Stokey, one way then the other. He'll go back to West on the right boot, kicks it up towards Fowler in the middle of the ground, who's had a bit of space in the last five minutes or so. He'll thump it forward towards the booth direction. He's got to beat two players. Was there holding? The umpire said no. Well done by Fiora just to hold his feet and boot the ball up in towards the middle of the ground where Hill has a lot of space. It sits up for him now. Which way is this kick going to go? Drives it up towards the oh. half forward line. Oh, all class. Muller, he's been the target all afternoon and mm. he puts out the one juke and just ripped it in. And he'll have a shot on goal from outside. Meters. Well, not outside now. From about 25 metres out directly in front as we cross down boundary side thanks to Life Care to Alice Mulvo. Yeah, just confirming after that little brawl that happened, two yellow cards were handed out. One to Todd Gladman, number 36 of Mulgrave, and one to number four of Doncaster, Josh Lumichisi. Thank you very much. Virtually you'd call this from point blank range. Oh, yeah. Big three goals this afternoon. Can he make it four? He does make it four. Straight over the goal umpire's head. It goes. And on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard, Doncaster move along nicely at the 15-minute mark to a six goals for a 40, leading a Mulgrave 3-4, 22. Yeah, you can see, though, that, that Steve Muller's really starting to make an impact in this game, mm. causing Mulgrave problems because 
obviously with Luke Cheney's here out, Jamez now gone to Galache and obviously down at the Mulgrave forward half row and Magama's double teaming uh, Adam Booth. So Muller's fourth major gives Doncaster extra breathing space. They lead by three goals and with Lubachisi off the ground following that indiscretion, Muller's role is going to be ever so mm. magnified now as that focal point. Look, it certainly will, and he's done a, a fantastic job so far. The grand attendant out here is still looking for the, the holder of red ticket E26 for the $150 <laughs> meat raffle. If you're in your car and you're listening and you've got that ticket, come and claim your prize. Well done, Seymour. McKenzie one, Re wins the knockout from the ruck contest. <laughs> but picking it up is West from the stoppage at ground level. Kicks it towards centre wing. Into the path there of Hesketh. Couldn't quite take it. The Lions move it towards half forward. Leicester couldn't quite take the mark in the contest. It was well spoiled by Marga and he forces it over the boundary line 60 metres around from the Mulgrave goal. They've got an open forward line although Doncaster dropping a couple of numbers back in the defensive zone as the ball is set in motion once again from the throw in. Niver Ruckman won the contest West at the fore of the ball. He's been impressive a little live wire in this mm. third term and he forces slippery yet another customer. ball up Very he slippery is customer. slippery like an eel certainly in the clinches the ball up once again is won by Booth. Jamo did well in the clinches and a free kick has been picked out. It's going the way of Ben Johnson for Doncaster holding the ball. So Jamo took on one too many tacklers there. Johnson chips the pass to centre wing, finds Anarchus amongst the interchange gates where there was plenty of drama only minutes ago. Anarchus wheels on the right foot, kicks to a two-on-one contest at the four of the ball, brilliantly read by Hill, hacks it inside 50 chance here for the Sharks if they can get the numbers back in their forward line, but Mulgrave well, their defensive line prevails and the mark has been taken on the halfback flank by Goldsmith, he looks inboard, still flirting with danger here hand pass comes back to Goldsmith, has a bit more time and space to weigh up an option kick towards centre wing, brilliantly marked by Fowler against two, sends a high ball towards the half forward line but brilliant body positioning there by Luke Parker, he's been magnificent all afternoon and he caught one for his quarter mm. after he kicked it and it'll be a downfield free to the Sharks. And you can see that Wester was really frustrated uh, yeah, with that Wazer, and, yep. and obviously uh, giving away a free kick to Luke Parker. So Marganis will take the resulting downfield free kick, chips the pass into the corridor, right in the middle of the ground, the mark has been taken by Galache, in fact it's going the way there of Fitzpatrick, looks into the centre circle, Schimmelbush has been sweeping across that centre line all afternoon. Chips it to Johnson. They've gone with a more conservative approach to their forward line here, Doncaster. Chipping it around as Johnson sends it towards half four. Big fly came from Kadir. Anarchus did well. Read the play. Got the hand pass over to Galache. But his kick went across the face. And, in fact, Mulgrave can clear it from their defensive zone as the mark is taken by Roper at half back. And Roper swings it out wide looking for Hesketh. Over the top of his head it goes around. Boldy sees it over the boundary line and out of bounds. As I've got a score come in from Fair Park and in, mm -hmm. in a very tight tussle. Uh, it was well. It was just only moments ago, 49 to 47, Colts Dreams way, but now it's a four-point lead to the Lions Ooh, in the okay. third term. So, Great game. Um, good Scorpy. stuff there, Soupy. Thanks to Choose Tap. Clearances seven to three in favour of Doncaster. Well, he's a clearance now for the uh, Mulgrave Football Club. As see Coolis drives the ball. It's a bouncing football. McGarnis would like to see that over the boundary line and out of bounds. Disguised it well for the umpire. Cheeseman <laughs> thinking that he just might have won a free kick there. Tried to con the umpire. Mm. Mm. Wishful well, thinking. Right in front of us here in the broadcast position. Great facility out here at the Doncaster mm. Football Club. Nice ground too. It's the umpire. Throws it in, a quick snap around the body. Oh. That would have been all right. Two and Dave, uh, David West. Well, he has been lively in that first half, and he just bobbed up at the right time at the stoppage there to kick a very important goal for oh, the yes. Mulgrave Football Club. Bendigo Bank scoreboard at the 19-minute mark of this third term, and it's been reduced back to a two-goal game. Yeah, they needed that one. Mine really uh, just knew where the goals were and uh, kicked it straight uh, through, and that's what Mulgrave needed. And hopefully that's the start the Lions needed. Well, it could reinvigorate the side, that's for sure, in this Premiership quarter. Doncaster 6-4, Mulgrave 4-4 as you go local for your footy. Back in the centre, McKenzie won the knockout for Doncaster. Jambo roving well, but McKenzie laying the tackle Gone. and causes the free kick. So he'll win it from the mm. centre of the ground. Brilliant tackle after he roved his own ball. So McKenzie, who's been a big star this year, Named in the best on 10 occasions in season 2014. Kicks it out wide to Carroll from centre wing. Looks inside 50. Kinnear at the fall of the ball. Couldn't quite take it. Eventually he regains it. Gets the hand pass to his teammate in Grocott. Breaks away. A snapper goal is across the face 
and only a minor score. In fact, the goal umpire is moving around as a goal. So Doncaster with the quick reply. 7-4-46, the Sharks to Mulgrave, 4-4-28. And once again, similarly to the last conversion, that goal came out of nowhere. Jez Grocott, I mentioned in the second quarter that he just needed to get his hands on the footy. And one of the first times we can actually remember it, mm. calling his name and, and an is. opportunistic goal. And, and they're back to that free goal margin. Soupy's stats are, are very, very interesting. The Sharks have reversed the trend. Mulgrave all over Doncaster in, in the clearance stat in the first half of the game. But Doncaster slowly gaining ascendancy around the stoppage. And, and Damo, that's an important area of any game of football. Yep. You get on top of the stoppage. Yeah, more or less leaves wind side 50 with more or less leaves the shots on goal. Well, here they go again because Curral won it straight out and kicked it inside forward 50. It was Ooh. a long kick and it was nearly taken in the mark there by Jarvis. But the umpires paid it a is. free kick to Ben Kinnear, who uh, went down pretty solidly there, I think. He no, I think he's paid, the mark. Jarvis. he's paid the mark. Yeah, it was a mark. Okay, well, you heard it from Will Taylor, our expert special comments man for this afternoon. So, big Humphrey. Uh, one of the favourite sons of the Doncaster Football Club in, in their history. Where does Humphrey come from? Yeah, he's uh, a very silent man. Oh, I see. Like Humphrey VV. So, Jarl. Same build, too. <laughs> <laughs> comes in now for about 45 metres out distance. Won't be a problem. He keeps Sausage. it low and he keeps it straight. Look at him get around the big fella, too. Yes. Fantastic bit of play there. And after Mulgrave looked like they might just be getting themselves back into this game, the margins back out to four goals on the Bendigo Banks. In scoreboard. the blink of an eye, uh, mm -hmm. BWS, Jeremy Groke got the opportunistic one. Then the clearance from McKenzie to Carroll, straight to Jarvis, who held on to a, a dubious mark, but was good enough to go back and, and slot it straight through the middle. Uh, a definite indication now. I think Doncaster have comfortably had the run of this third quarter, the premiership quarter, and, and all credit to Mulgrave. Um, they're not going to go away. Um, mm. don't, don't expect Doncaster to kick away to a seven or eight goal lead by three-quarter time. There's no chance of that happening. But the alarm bells are ringing for the Lions. They trail now by four goals, which is quite significant in the context of this game. In the middle of the ground, Johnson gives the hand pass to Fiora from the stoppage, breaks away at centre wing, chips the pass towards half-court. Mark taken by Anarchus, who's been everywhere in this game. He claims the mark about 70 metres out from goal. Can wheel around. He's going to opt for the short option here. Eventually it's taken by his teammate in Johnson. Swings round onto the left foot. A worm-burning pass towards Kinnear. It wasn't quite taken effectively. And Gilling can clear for the Lions. Towards the half-back flank. A fumble from West. The umpire's blown the Legged. whistle. And a legging free kick. It's going the way of the Lions. And they can clear from their defensive half. Again, opting to go across the ground with the switch. And they can do it effectively on this occasion because they got two players running. Roper on centre wing takes the mark. He's got a paddock to run into. Can wheel around Muller. Eventually looks into the middle of the ground, into the corridor, Anarchus. Well, it was chopping at the arms, according to the mm. umpire, as he laid the spoil. So, Mulgrave have a scoring opportunity here. The ball hoisted into the pocket. At the back, no mark paid. Couldn't quite take it on the third grab. That was Fowler. And eventually, the Doncaster Brigade run back in numbers and force it over the boundary line for a throw in deep inside the four pocket for the Lions. They need a goal. Let's go around the grounds with Dyson Baker. Yeah, Division 4, Wilbur, Fentry Gully, 11-11-77, lead by 69 points. Nutter Wadding, 1-2-8, Forest Hill, 6-5-41, 26 point leaders over Park Orchards, 1-9-15, Sylvan, 11-6-72. Oh, I think there might be a shot on goal here. What a fantastic kick by David Wazer and Mulgrave, just what the doctor ordered. Sorry to cut you off there, Dyson, but it was an important <laughs> bit of play in the Mulgrave forward line, margin right. back down to three goals. Uh, a bigger margin out at uh, Kilsa, out of Pink's Reserve, 2 4 16, Kilsyth, Silver, 11 6 72, mm. Warrandyte, 12 4 76, Surrey Park, 3 2 20, Division 3, One Turner South, 3 7 25, 12 point leaders over Whitehorse, Baronia lead by 11, Templestowe lead by 45, Ringwood lead by 22, and a half time score, Heathmont lead by three goals at, uh, at three quarter time. Over Glenn Waverley? Correct. Well, that's a shame for the Hawks' perspective, but they certainly got a chance in that match as we're back at Shram's Reserve. Mackenzie won the knockout from the stoppage and again lays his own tackle. He's certainly been working overtime, and that's one of the attributes behind his good form this season. As we have the ball up in the centre of the ground. And just going back to that last play, that goal from Mulgrave, they, that's pretty much what they need to do. Really got to scrap it out and uh, get the easy clearances uh, that uh, they need. Otherwise, it's going to be a dogfight, and that's what uh, Doncaster's liking at the moment. Well, they have gained the clearance here, the Lions. Heskiff will be the recipient from a high tackle in the stoppage. Gets the hand pass to his teammate in the lively Siakoulis. Sends a probing kick into the pocket, but a brilliant reading of the play from Zach Carroll. He's taken the overhead mark deep inside his defensive zone and again repels another Mulgrave attack. He looks and finds McKenzie deep 
in the full back position. So McKenzie goes short, back to Carroll. And Carroll takes off now, reaches the defensive arc in the end. Kicks it up towards a Kinnear oh. position who gave away a bit of a free kick there, which the umpire saw. Clearly looked like that was uh, advantage. certainly advantage, but nonetheless, free kick is with Mulgrave. They currently trail this goal, uh, trail this game by three straight kicks oh. as the ball goes up towards the half forward line. It was a terrible pass, and over the boundary line it goes. Division two, gentlemen, Bayswater, yep. nine seven sixty one, thirty eight point leaders over Donny East, three five twenty three. Waverley Blues, 9-2-56, lead by three goals over East Burwood, 6-3-39. North Ringwood, 4-6-30, uh, keeping Moorabark to uh, just 1-2-8 at half time, 22-point leaders. Uh, and in Division 1, 81 points, Bourne over Knox, 16 points, Blackburn over South Croydon. Noble Park lead by 34 over Lilydale. Uh, Montrose lead by a straight 10 goals over East Ringwood. Norwood lead by three goals over Roval and Vermont, as we heard before. 23 points up over Scoresby. Well, Anarchus kicked the ball into the wards of the middle of the ground. It's picked up there by Stoke. He got the handball received. West screams for it across half forward line, but they go out wider towards Booth, who's been very quiet this afternoon. One of the few marks he's taken. Certainly not within range, too, the big full forward. And kicks it towards the Fowler direction. It was a spearing pass. Oh. And, and he picked up there by Coolis. Bangs it on his boot, but he pushed it to the right-hand side. So through for a minor score margin. Back to 17 points now. On the Bendigo Bank scoreboard, Doncaster have the lead. We've gone 26 minutes now in this third term. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast on 98.1 Radio Eastern and streaming live around the world on efl.org.au as a risky kick from Fiora might here just pay off here because Ramboldi got opened up in towards the middle of the ground up towards the half forward line where Galache had to beat Willsmore for it. He's nearly stripped it. They stripped each other of the football in the <laughs> end. Comes down there to Jarvis whose handball went into no man's land. It was a little bit risky and now the, the Lions will have a chance to get a reprieve here through Fredericks. Chips the ball over the top. It was an absolute shocker, wasn't it? So over it goes. On the full. The doo doo. People saying it might have been. No, it certainly wasn't touched. It was, so. wasn't behind the mark at all. So it's coming back. He was 20 metres further back, though, so I dare say that he kicked over it. So for Dudo, true centre wing position here. Right at the interchange gates. Oh. So you could sort of sense that he wanted to go on with it, didn't you? And as he kicked it inside forward 50 now, the ball Four sits kick. up but uh, to no avail. And good marks being taken by Booth across the half-back line. Handball off now. This is Cruz on the right boot. Kicks it out towards the Jamo direction. The ball's got to sit up nicely for nice. him. He's got Anarchus right on his hammer. Clever enough to get a little kick around the corner to Leicester, who wasn't looking forward in the end. All he wanted to do was go backwards, so that's what they do. Jamo in towards the middle of the ground. Mark's been taken by Stoke. He got a quick handball off. Stoke, he's been good today. The kick up towards the Fowler direction. Well done there by Rumboldi. Got a double fister on it, but Wills War might be the first one to meet the football out on the wing position. Right on his hammer is Colinari, who forced him to do it in an under handball. But a fantastic smother by Rumboldi coming across and intercepting that Fitzpatrick, uh, that... A kick inside forward 50 by Fredericks, I should say. And over the boundary line goes. Fire throws it in. McKenzie just stood flat-footed in the end. We still give him the knockout, though, as Mulgrave link up here. I think oh. this could be West again on the right boot. Which way is this kick going to go? Coming back, coming back, and push through for one behind. So not too much excitement around that kick either no. as, uh, as that went set sailing towards goal as Mulgrave still stay in this game too as Carroll clears it for Doncaster Damo 28 and a half minutes gone in this third term only 16 points the margin in favour of the Sharks as they have possession through McKenzie on centre wing just get the sense a goal right on the brink of three quarter time for the Sharks would absolutely kill the morale of Mulgrave this afternoon that was a risky kick but taken in the one mid by Zach Carroll playing well between half back and centre wing he has lifted after oh. quarter time chip pass wasn't so effective however McKenzie regains it on the half volley at ground level gives it to Ben Johnson he's in a confined space but he loves that situation Peduto back to Johnson onto Kick. the left foot brilliant chip pass into the path of Luba Cheesy, who's back on the ground after his indiscretion hard up against the line a long left ball oh, towards definitely holding on and a free yep. kick is going to be paid 
as BWS called it. Ben Kinnear held on to behind the play, and he can have a very crucial shot on goal in the context of this game from 30 metres out on a 45-degree angle. Just quickly, I want to touch on Dean Sierkoulos, who's completely gone out of the game in the third quarter. He did it at Murubak a few weeks ago. He did not play a four-quarter mm, performance. Correct. He's their key. I've yeah. been watching the last 10 minutes. There's no one tagging him. He's just not getting anywhere near the footy. He plays four quarters. Malgo get back into the game. In the meantime, Ben Kinnear... Former Collingwood player, of course, in the early 2000s, has a shot on goal, but it's drifted off to the right, right on the free quarter time siren. So a bad miss, an opportunity not capitalised for the Sharks. It's only a minus score. They move on to 8-5-53 to Mulgrave, 5-6-36. A 17-point window for them to work in in this final term. We've got a grandstand finish on our hands, boys, at Shrams Reserve. We certainly do, Damo. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast on 98.1 Radio Eastern and streaming live on efl.org.au and enjoying your afternoon as you go local for your football. We've got all the important three-quarter time scores.